uh, good morning in US, Canada, good afternoon in Europe, UK and Africa, good evening in Asia Pacific, India, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore. We have with us, ladies and gentlemen, a very young, bright, dynamic, handsome, of course, a vibrant business leader known as Mr. Sanjay Kaur. And I welcome him to this prime time leadership excellence series called New DNA of Leadership. Welcome Sanjay to this evening show. I know it's late for you in Singapore and uh, I am right now in India for me it's 5.30, but then there are people from Canada, America, Africa, England, as well as from Asia Pacific joining and watching and listening to this thought process of new DNA of leadership. I would like to welcome you with folded hands, Sanjay. Thank you very much, Mr. Bakshi. It's an honor. Uh, uh, we can debate uh, if this is young leader <laughs> or uh, <laughs> not, but I, I totally appreciate you calling me for this quick chat here. Thank you so much. Sanjay, you, I call you Sanjay and you can call me DK. So no need to have any formality of this term. And uh, I am known as DK in my fraternity in business and human resources. So before, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I can see a lot of people, Ajay, Ajay from Germany has joined. I can see Yon has joined from Boston. I can see Im joined from Thailand. I can see Kashi joined from uh, Faridabad, I can see Kamesh Raji, ex-president of Aditya Birla Group, joined from IIT Association President also from Thailand, from Bangkok. I can see Suresh Gupta, my friend in Washington, D.C., 40 years in Washington, D.C., joined from Washington, D.C., early morning, Dr. Gupta. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let me first uh, uh, have an honor of uh, introducing this young, bright, dynamic Sanjay call to you. After I do that, I would, uh, uh, you know, start my interaction with him. I have some questions for him. And during that interaction, please park your questions that I would request Sanjay to respond to as many as questions as possible. And those who are on Zoom, I would unmute them and they can ask the questions themselves. Sanjay is currently as, serving as president of Asia Pacific in Japan, service provider business for Cisco. He is EVP and CEO. He was earlier EUP and CEO head of Ericsson. Well known name in Ericsson as well. I was talking to some people from Ericsson this morning and they said, wow, Sanjay is going to be a very dynamic person. Sanjay has held a number of global leadership roles, including being global VP and JM for the service level business in Ericsson headquarters in Sweden. He's an ICT professional with over 25 years. He doesn't look like having 25 years of experience in multinational <laughs> environments across Europe, Asia, Pacific, Japan, and Africa. He has worked with several prestigious multinational companies in ICT industry, like BT Group, Delia, Swintel, Ericsson, Cisco. He has provided very strategic advice to telcos on topics include mobile, wireless, broadcasting web, media players, ISPs, as well as various other service uh, policy makers on various strategic technology and operational issues in the management consulting capacity. He is a highly respected industry leader and a true global citizen who has proven his leadership abilities in all the roles he played. One of his legacy achievements across all his roles is ability to identify, cultivate, and nurture future leaders. We are going to be talking on that, equipping them with the skill set required, excel in the fast paced ICT and diversity in the workplace. He served as a board member of GSMA representing Ericsson from 2010 to 2012. He's also advising a few startups. Wow, that sounds great. 
and has founded MKF, a non-profit organization. He has also authored a book published by Villay titled called Business Models for Sustainable Telecom Growth. Business Models for Sustainable Telecom Growth. Sanjay is alumni of National Institute of Technology, Durgapur, India, and Howard Business School, USA. A transformational leader, a certified independent director with about 25 years of experience in ICT in international environment. And he has, to his credit, many of ICT technologies and E2E service providing support system. Sanjay is known as Boroxis as well as lifelong learning with glass in half full mindset. Every situation is a great opportunity Sanjay talks about. He returned to Asia Pacific after two decades in Europe, Africa and US to be part of the digital revolution that's creating massive economic activity in APJC with four large countries, China, India, the two biggest one, my God, Japan and Indonesia among top 10 in the world. Sanjay's specialties are general management, board advisor, independent director, business and sales leadership, strategic planning, execution, thought leadership, change management, business case driven thinking with entrepreneurs mindset. Wow, what a fascinating, what a profound background our guest of honor this evening has got. Sanjay Call, Sir, Sanjay, my first question to you. When I look at you, it's such an amazing and absolutely an awesome journey of more than two and a half decades as a business excellence leader from Europe, Africa, and then to Asia Pacific. I can go further on and talk about your achievements and the talent what you have. But I would like to know about your family, your parents, your childhood. How did you grow? How did you go, grow, and glow? I would again repeat, how did you go, <laughs> grow, and glow in this uh, from a childhood? What kind of value system your parents ingrained in you and we feel today proud of Sanjay Call, a great business leader in the global world? Yes, Sanjay. Thank you, Mr. Bakshi. That was very flattering. I think I've never been introduced like this. So, uh, thank you so very much. I think uh, I feel uh, honored, totally honored, right? So, look, uh, you know, I come from a very humble background. Uh, my dad was a school teacher, and, uh, and there were some basic fundamental value systems, you know, that got ingrained in me. And uh, I think they might sound very basic. Uh, uh, that was, that was the, you can say the first level of education and carving of, you know, what I call a value system. Obviously it got built over years um, I had the privilege to travel around the globe, you know, which kind of gives you new perspectives, but but the foundation was um, very uh, simple. Uh, it was built on two or three principles and value systems. And I think the first one was um, uh, was dream big. You know, my dad, uh, uh, school teacher in India, uh, you can imagine how huge his aspirations could be, but uh, but I think he, he used to tell me in the very childhood, son, if you want to if you want to reach moon, you got to aim for sun, you know. So, and I think um, I think it. I recall my scorecards, you know, coming from school, and I showed to him, and he will always point at, oh, why did you drop one mark on this subject? <laughs> Um, if it was not to kind of put me down, but if he started with that, he says, because I believe you can do that. You can get a hundred percent, right? So, so I think that was kind of one. Second, of course, was uh, in the very beginning, you know, as you go through your career, you know, you have ups and downs. 
and and he was a role model himself for that you know which is stay humble um you respect your where you are headed because uh, you know particularly in a in a professional career or in a corporate ladder i think i was a middle uh, manager probably i got promoted to be a senior manager at that time in ericsson so i came back to meet him in india he used to live in india and uh, he said look uh, son as you are growing i'm very happy that you're growing uh, in your career but as you grow up uh, make sure you're very kind to people you know that meet you along the way because because the day you will come down you will see those guys who you do not did not treat well they will be coming up <laughs> the ladder so always be humble in respect of you know where you had it so and i think this was couple of uh, foundational principles and you know when i look at my my career uh, different roles i have done i start with these two foundational aspects uh, dream big uh, aim for sun if you want to go to moon and second be humble um, yeah so i think that's couple of things and i think you know my mom was another source of inspiration you know she her her process was just believe in yourself and i think she did believe in me you know that gives you a kick in respect to what you did she thought my son was a hero you know even if it was a small little success and i think these couple of things created the foundation of uh, i mean i would not call myself a super success but where I, whatever i am uh, is the the foundational value system was based on these three things beautiful you know i can understand son of a teacher and of course so there would be certainly a lot of discipline and some of the thoughts shared by sanjay ladies and gentlemen around the world watch this young dynamic business leader the parents the mom the inspiration the mom was always or mom the son is always the best hero the best actor and he did mention about his father saying you know that's very important look at people when you go up you might need them when you go down this is one of an important aspect in my life i always talk about hey look at people when you go up you might need them when you go down and that is the philosophy that's the humility this young dynamic business leader is sanjay very rightly uh, very very great respects your parents and uh, uh, god bless them Sanjay, when you did your engineering, and at that point of time from uh, National Institute of Technology, at that point of time, was there any mentoring? There were people who supported you, who guided you, and that was the time when you could pick up the professional capabilities which got ingrained in you, and you could take it forward. With their some friends, with their teachers, with their mentors, a quick response. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, a lot of them. You know, I, I mean, we will spend another thirty minutes talking about people who have inspired me, who have been kind to me, who have supported me. Uh, I mean, the list is pretty long, uh, but obviously, few stand out. You know, um, I had a couple of professors in my engineering school. Um, no i i cleared gate exam you know that you do in the final year of engineering and those days uh, i mean that was the ultimate you finish your btech then you do mtech and uh, and i sat with my head of the department of gupta and um, told them uh, this is what i intend to do is a sign look i i mean you have to understand it's many couple of decades ago i'm talking about and he kind of guided me sanjay there are huge opportunities out there telecoms market at that time was at its inception it's booming i was a telecom engineer i i specialized in telecoms and he said probably more than amtech you should go and you know in a multinational a lot of multinationals are coming into india and i i just couldn't follow him at that point but you know um, i actually joined amtech and and after 3 months decided that was not for me so i dropped out from uh, from iit kharagpur and took a job with bt consulting in uk i mean so 
it was a coincidence that the two things came at the same time, right? So, yeah, I think uh, there are many others, uh, but there have been a lot of kind people along the way who guided, who supported. Uh, you know, when I was doing my engineering, of course, uh, those days didn't cost as much as it does these days, but I got someone, um, you know, it's an organization in US called Kashmiri Overseas Station that funded my education. I think they used to look at uh, uh, people who had good academic record and based on that, they will fund you. So I got supported along the way. I mean, so, so, so thankful and to those guys who at that time came forward. That sounds fantastic, Sanjay. In the meanwhile, we have got people joining us. Jennifer from Sarawak from Malaysia. Jennifer, nice to see you around. You have been recently taken another new assignment. And I see Usha Ko joining from Thailand. And I am seeing that uh, Jim has joined from Durban already. And Usha Ko says, wow, God bless Sanjay. We are proud of you. Maybe she knows you. She is mentioning it, putting it on the Facebook as well. I see Vivek Harakoli joined. Har Harakol, we call him. Very old, 100 year old Kashmiri. Vivek, a very well known business leader who is already been here. Kamishra Ji is already here. So we are, we are watching the journey of this great man called Sanjay Kaul. And in his humble way, he is talking about those people who supported him and guided him. And probably we will be asking him, how is he going to be supporting? people because he's, he was supported by many people and how he supported others. So now my question to you is, how did you this land in Ericsson and how was your this journey of 15 years? And it's very important for all of us to understand because staying in a company for 15 years, crafting excellence across in the business model, it can be a great learning for some of the budding managers who are going to be watching now or who are going to be watching later, or those who are in the corporate world. How did you really craft your journey of excellence at Ericsson? And you got a lot of respectability at Ericsson. I was this morning talking in Dubai with one of my well-known, she worked with me, Supriya Kabu, and she, later she joined Ericsson. She said, oh, Sanjay is going to be there. The Supriya was later worked with Ericsson, and what a dashing guy, but I remember him, and I'll try to see if this I can join. So the words, word spread, those great leaders, ladies and gentlemen, the great leaders' words spread like this. So just by the way, I had a call with Ericsson, Sanjay is going to be with you, great leader. This is what the leadership is. This is what we need not to advertise for the leadership traits. It automatically does. Tell me about your journey about Ericsson in a short, quick one. It has been a very phenomenal journey, I understand. Yeah. Look, uh, I think the how I entered into Ericsson was um, I worked for a consulting company. You know, Telia Squirtle is an operator led consulting, management consulting company. My last assignment with that company uh, uh, was to set up, uh, we were setting up a telco in Slovenia. It's a small country uh, in Baltics. Uh, and Ericsson, of course, was uh, one of the technology vendors that were selling into us. And, uh, and I think I got to know uh, a couple of senior leaders there. And, uh, uh, and I, you know, I got a, job assignment with Telia Swittle to go to Brazil, which uh, uh, we went there for look and see by the time I was married uh, with my wife to show her the place. And we, we met an unfortunate incident. My wife got mugged and, uh, uh, and she said, I'm going home. I'm not <laughs> going to work here. And so I came back uh, at that time in Sweden and say, I need a job. Uh, because uh, I had to say no to the assignment I had just taken, right? So, and I called my friends in um, uh, uh, Ericsson folks that I had met, met during the, the C Mobile journey, you know, where they were selling into us. And uh, honestly, uh, first call, and they say, come. And I met uh, uh, their vice president of uh, India region, and uh, <laughs> he almost offered me the job in the lift, you know. So, <laughs> 
But it started pretty, uh, I mean, it was pretty easy because they were setting up professional services business in Ericsson at that point. And, uh, and it was a long journey, truly. I think I truly uh, developed as a professional in that company. And I owe to many, many, many mentors and coaches I met along the way, including uh, Hans Westberg, who, who was a group CEO for, for many years in the company, right? So, yeah, so starting, I started with professional services, uh, which also had a management or business consulting as one of the streams. I was asked to lead uh, uh, the services business uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, you know, and that was, uh, that was an expatriate assignment. I got to go to South Africa to lead that business. Um, and uh, one of the golden times, because uh, it was a phenomenal growth. Uh, I, I was there for five years. And during that journey, I got promoted twice and results were uh, unbelievable, you know, so it was a, where uh, South Africa was uh, seen as a role model in, in Ericsson uh, those days. Uh, yeah, so I think one thing led to other, but, but it was always taking, getting an assignment and moving it from point A to point Z. You know, that is who I have been transforming it, building leaders along the way. And, and I can tell you one thing, uh, which I always quote uh, what I did in, in South Africa was uh, uh, was to create a local team of leadership because when I landed in South Africa, there was not even one single South African managers in the team, and I that looked pretty odd. And I challenged my my boss at that time. May he rest in peace. He's he's not alive anymore, Mr. Ambro. And I told him, how come we don't have any African as our leader? And and I think uh, he just took that question and he said, oh, the, you're, this is a new kid in the block because he's been in the job for five years in Africa. And of course, he had his own reasons, but uh, he called me and said, after two weeks, he said, your question has been haunting me. Now I want you to fix it. <laughs> when you ask a tough question, it comes back to you. So anyway, I'll cut the story short. I went out recruited 15 people. I think two of them were black Africans, very bright, talented, young uh, men and women, um, seven of them ladies. Uh, and I got them in, I put them through a very rigorous program. Um, yeah, so I'm talking about 2005. 2008 and I finished that assignment. I I was offered a job to lead a business uh, in, in Ericsson, it was a global responsibility. And when I left, three of them were part of the management board. And one lady, uh, which I'm very proud of, became the young advisor to Ericsson Group at that point. So, um, you know, that was a kicker early in my career to see that diversity, inclusion, uh, grooming leaders um, is is not an art; it's a science, and you got to put it, put a concerted effort behind it. It should not be a tick in the box. And uh, and I, I can tell you uh, one thing you didn't talk about is that I have been a highly inclusive leader that supports diversity. Uh, I promote uh, diverse talent in all the roles I have been in. Uh, so. Uh, I hope I didn't uh, drag it too long, but I think no, that was a little no, no. bit my uh, my um, Africa experience, right? Uh, and then I was given a role in Sweden. It was a business that was in losses. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, growing at a really faster pace. You know, my, it was a complete shift. I was uh, asked to run a business that was in uh, losses. There were structural issues in that business. And uh, I recall my first meeting, I think it was about four weeks in that job. I was presenting to a group CFO and CEO of my plans. Uh, and I said, uh, I have two uh, ways forward to get this business back on track. First one is that we need to rationalize deep. Uh, there were 38 products in that business unit. 
I said, uh, we need to let go 12. I mean, cut 12 products and use that R&D budget to feed the rest uh, because we were spreading ourselves too thin. Uh, that was one. And second, at that point, I, I said this portfolio we should take off the Ericsson and create a separate entity because you know, it was a service layer uh, portfolio and Ericsson was at that point very focused on selling radio base stations, the radio, and then just started uh, managed services business, which was growing pretty fast. And uh, well, that didn't happen, but uh, I brought the business to black in three years. It was, it was a tough role because I had to let go almost 500 people in six R&D centers that I was responsible for across the globe, you know, three in Europe and three in Asia, Gongjol, Shanghai, and Chennai, and, and then three in Europe. And uh, uh, huge transformation, and, but at the end, I think business was back in black. And, uh, and I'd, I think that's where I'm, my dad's lesson of, uh, you know, being humble. And uh, I recall when I was given farewell of that role, I was coming to India for the next assignment. Uh, I got a, a bunch of letters from my direct reports. And those are my uh, biggest position, you know, <laughs> for some lovely words said, you know, which kind of uh, made my dad proud when he, I made him read those letters. And he says, yes, you live the value, you know. So <laughs> that is what is new DNA of leadership. That is the journey of excellence of a dynamic Sanjay Cole. And he talked about from Salvania to uh, going to Africa and then coming back to Asia Pacific. I remember those days, Vivek Harkoli will remember 2004, 2005, we were building up in Baltic states, Lithuania, uh, the uh, PET plant, number one investor in that country at that point of time. And Vivek and me, we used to get into this Baltic state uh, through Copenhagen. There was no direct, you know, you had to wait for getting a visa at Copenhagen that time to enter into Lithuania. And that time we were around, and then we were around in uh, the Netherlands, where again we, I was the HR director. And one important aspect Sanjay talked about, which is, ladies and gentlemen, for all of us to understand the leader's role of diversity and inclusion. And he talked about his African experience when he entered, there was not a single African leader. He turned out and he made 15 leaders and out of those 15, three, four took very senior positions. That is the level of global leadership excellence. And that's what is, I will give you a big round of applause. I am one, I am one of the hated persons by expats as an HR director in the company I work starting global talent because I used to do the localization in any country. We were spread in 18 countries and I used to promote localization, localization, localization. And my expats used to be what kind of HR guy we got. But that is what your role has been. And I would like to give a big round of applause to Sanjay for such a brilliant, just brilliant leadership excellence he just shared with us. Sanjay, after 15 years of this experience, your customer centricity, incredible bottom line, cultural integration, whatnot, and your dad's those words, be humble. Then finally, uh, getting into Cisco in 2014, what were the main challenges? How did you build up this role in the region? Because now you've got a very big role, which is mighty China and mighty India. <laughs> I call it mighty China, mighty India. We are much, much, much bigger than any part of the world. So would you be keen to throw some light on the beauty of your present leadership role, how you are growing it and making it possible for uh, your Cisco to become a clear leader into this particular region, whichever 10 countries you are thinking about. Would be keen to know about it because I have personally a lot of respect for Cisco. And sorry, we are on Zoom. We will be talking sometime. 
and I really <laughs> wanted to start with Cisco Loan back one year back when I started this online after COVID, but we could not do it beyond a month. So what are your plans? So what are you doing? Let's know about your leadership, how you are taking it forward in these 10 countries. Look, uh, you know, as you move in, in, in corporate world, uh, you know, higher you go, uh, more your role as a leader becomes a, of an influencer. I think uh, it's a myth that um, higher you go, more powerful you are, more uh, uh, thoughts you can call. Uh, my, my learning is that, uh, yes, as a leader um, in where I am right now, my role is to set a strategic direction. Uh, I call setting up, you know, again, coming back to my my dad's advice, you know, setting up audacious goals, uh, but not just leaving it there, uh, taking it to the next level in terms of creating a line of sight uh, between the last individual in your organization and your overall goal of the unit, right? So, uh, so I think once you have done that, uh, you have crafted a strategy that's set for execution, right? So. Uh, Otherwise, vision and strategy is a myth if you don't have a concrete execution plan behind it. I think that's kind of uh, very, very important. And then uh, number two is making sure you build leaders under you that are, that you can trust 100%. Uh, because um, it's very, very important that you give authority uh, and accountability with uh, with uh, what you call you, you combine authority and accountability in the same uh, as the two sides of the same coin, right? Um, and so uh, that's where I spend uh, thirty percent of my energy, uh, making sure I have gotten the right leaders and grooming the leaders to take that accountability. Make sure, you know, uh, I'll tell you a funny story in a while. Uh, make sure that they're getting this uh, uh, the vision and the strategy of the organization and they understood the goals and they're able to draw the line of sight to the last man in the organization. So, uh, and the story goes like this, you know, a year and a half ago, um, we had a big problem in China, you know, China numbers are tanking. And uh, of course, um, the company wants you to do those numbers somewhere else. So I ended up getting a really massive target, which was uh, which was like way above what's possible, right? Um, of course, uh, when my big boss was talking to me about the target. I mean, he, I could see in his eyes, he knew that it was a difficult one. And um, you know, again, uh, I said, I will think over it and I'll meet you the next day. And next day, I went and met this, my boss at uh, that time. And I said, I'm very thankful for you to choose me with this really, really huge number because it tells me that you really trust me. And, uh, and I am very sure that uh, you will do everything possible in your power to make me successful. And, uh, and it's pretty, I will not name the person, but a very, very dynamic leader. Uh, he, she put a pause, the lady, uh, she put a pause and said, and uh, looked into my eyes and said, Sanjay, you can do it. And, uh, and when I got that, uh, I left the room. Uh, now I had to meet my leadership team. <laughs> That's the tough part, <laughs> telling them they have to do uh, half a million more than what <laughs> they should be doing. And, uh, you know, I was walking to that meeting um, and I just came to my mind, you know, because the, when, when I got this big uh, audacious goal to deliver on, I was thinking it's mission to Mars. So uh, I came into the room, I have my leaders full of, uh, in the room, those days we used to have physical meetings. Yeah. And I said, Mars, this year, uh, this is our strategy, this is our, our mission is uh, we're going to Mars this year, you know, so, so, so anyway, uh, uh, you know, after we do this goal setting, we meet, we used to meet in 
in Vegas once a year. The all leaders meet there. So I wore a astronaut suit uh, and went on the stage to talk about my strategy. Uh, so that's where it started, right? So, so and uh, the year completed. I think we did a pers one person more than what I had set as an audacious goal, and um, and there's a lot of things underneath that. But it was just ensuring that you're transparent, you're humble, but you're setting up that audacious goal. And and when you do that, you know uh, everybody around in your ecosystem comes to make you successful. You just have to have a faith that you can do it, right? So I hope. Uh, uh, yeah, it was too long answer to your question, but I wanted to back it with a story, you know. It's... No, this is a great story because uh, the lady boss who trusted you and you trusted with your people, you involved them. I believe trust, transparency, and leads to togetherness. Trust, transparency leads to togetherness, and then any goal is possible. That's what you have done. And in fact, I am I am really uh, thankful that we met today and we are interacting on this note because there are a lot of people who will get to know how a leader delivers the target by involving, participating, management, and even taking decisions along with people that's what he said we used to have face to face meetings set the mission and the goal setting process involve everybody and he came with an astronaut suit my god that is the way because you need to you need to get into that kind of a mode and i'm seeing some of the comments so i can see oh uh, dr suren the goal is joined from houston yeah and i can see uh, Suresh Gupta, Dr. Suresh Gupta is talking about goals and just like Gupta's, just kidding, lol. And I can see that we got, uh, uh, we got people join from, oh, Nirja has joined from, Nirja Kohl Sadhu has joined from uh, New Jersey. Thank you so much. Manu Rastogi from, oh, very old uh, HR leader, for joined from uh, Calcutta. And I can see Anil K. Mishra, Dr. HR, already here. Mr. Pat already here. Shafalika Ban from England, she is there. All of them are there. Please keep on raising questions. And in the meanwhile, I have got many more people who have already joined. Oh, why? Oh, I got I got my friend from Boston. And I got Mr. Shubhash Jagoda from Faridabad, well-known HR leader in the country. My God, Muthu Saab has joined from US. Take your, uh, is it Indian Muthu or it is the UK, US Muthu? Now, ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? We are looking at the journey of excellence of Sanjay, how beautifully he talked about involving people and taking it forward and making those numbers possible. Sanjay, looking at your business leadership of par excellence, you have gained tremendous respect as well as experience in operation management, acquisitions, integrations, organic business growth, customer satisfaction, business development, PL and management, budget planning, what next? Are you looking to get into? What makes you mad? Making a difference to the entire business model. And what next? That too in this ever-changing very tough and dynamic business. Well, I'm not coming to COVID as a COVID question I have elevated. Ever changing dynamic business. How how are you? What is your thought? What next for you, Sanjay? Uh, honestly, uh, pretty hard to tell what next, but you know, we're in a world where uh, I was last year on a people uh, conference, I think great, great managers conference, where I made a statement that uh, in the industry where I am, if you are not learning every day uh, for the next six months, you're obsolete. Making a claim that I have 25, 30 years of experience doesn't mean anything. And I'll tell you why I'm saying what I'm saying. You know, I believe uh, digital will touch everything. And I think obviously COVID has accelerated that. Digital anything that will benefit from digitization will be digitized. 
and and rightfully so because it's making that particular vertical efficient. Uh, you know, I, my own uh, experience, you know, prior to this, you know, prior to COVID, previous year I traveled 151 days, and there were uh, a year. Um, uh, there were days when, for a 45-minute meeting in in Melbourne, I will take a red eye, spend two days in Australia and take another red eye to come back to Singapore or India, wherever I'm going next. And when I look back at that, that was extremely stupid to do. <laughs> so uh, that tells you it's a pretty uh, naive example, but that tells you we have learned the art of doing those 45 meetings like we are doing right now and see how, the, how efficient the world has become the carbon footprint that I created by taking those flights. I lost my sleep. I must have slept very little in those uh, four days. And, and if actually I got that, not 45, 30 minutes with, with that very uh, senior leader uh, of one of my clients. Uh, so, so I think that's what digitization would mean for every industry. I think uh, we are seeing uh, in our own business, uh, our our productivity in our software uh, uh, side of the equation, the engineering teams is increasing by 30%. Uh, so, so, so I think we are pivoting into, into a business which will be cloud centric, which will be as a service models. But at the end of the day, um, digitization will make every vertical industry efficient. Uh, some might go faster, others might follow, but those who will jump on this digitization wagons uh, will be will be the winners. Uh, and I think apps we are used to since you know Apple was came into existence, we saw a lot of apps uh, which we use in for, for personal application or business application. My sense is that application is not anymore an uh, extension of the business. Applications have become the business. If we look at your your business, uh, Mr. Bakshi, you're running it on an application. Imagine if you had to put these three, four hundred people that are listening in into a room, the amount of logistics and the amount of flights that you'd have to put together. That was complete, you know, uh, cost guzzler. Now you manage it with an app. You know, and that's where we are headed, you know, and in this app world, uh, we will need very different skills, you know, uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence. Uh, and, and I believe uh, we, you know, the professionals of the previous era need to step up and either learn them or pivot uh, into a different direction. So, uh, so, so I think uh, I Hey, as I said, uh, glass is always half full, you know, you always, whatever you do, you always feel there's more. So, um, so I think uh, the next step for me is, is probably in a direction which probably fills that half empty glass. Uh, I today don't know, I'm very pleased with where I am. Uh, uh, maybe, uh, uh, in a different direction, you know, and that's how I've led my career. I run my career in three to four year spells, and the second X spell is very different from the previous one. So it's a pretty cyclic career. So, yeah. No, oh, beautiful, beautiful uh, thought process, what you have shared. And especially I am talking about when you shared about accountability and authority to the people. And then you're talking about being a student, being learning model. And I also, I, I'm still, I'm a student of management and leadership. I learn from people like you, leaders or the class. Yes, of course. I am also extremely happy last 14 months I am on this, uh, you know, COVID made me to be there. I am not a man. Uh, I'm not a pizza kind of a person. I want a fine dining in a room, talk to people. And I'm doing it last 250 programs. But you know, uh, Sanjay, it's still not my business model. I'm no, not a single dollar, not a single Thai bar, not a single rupee I charge. I do it free. And I keep my employees on. 
I paid salaries from my pocket. When will this turn into the business model? I don't know. So I, I don't know at this point of time, but I am doing it out of my passion and I call it romancing with my destiny. I'm just romancing uh -huh. with my destiny. Funny. Yeah, I, I love it. I love doing it. Uh, and that's how I learn. But when will it turn to be the business? I think I was thinking January 21 onwards. Yes, but now still I think we are struggling. And But I keep my power of positivity, power of perseverance, power of passion, power of performance, power of profitability, power of partnership, leading to power of pride on. Oh. POPs I have created. I have this question to you because when you talk about the learning model, I have been believing, turn the designation of CEO into CLO. No more CEOs. Let it be CLOs, chief learning officers. And you are one of the CLOs. How do you see that in an environment now that every CEO must actually get into this kind of a mode of becoming learning officers so that the entire organization learns and takes the organization, country and the global world to the next level of excellence. What are your thoughts on this? Quick one. Yeah, you know, I if you look at Cisco as an organization where I am right now. Um, we believe we are a $50 billion startup. And why am I saying that? Because you're in a business where you're challenged every day. And if you miss one transition, you're out. Have you seen brands like Nokia, Kodak, and, and many more? You know, one transition they missed, they were out. Very, very successful company. So, so I think as a leader, as you rightly said, uh, in many ways, you have to be that learning officer. You have to understand uh, what's happening in the marketplace and that should guide you, give you the insights into how you have to pivot your business because if you are standalone and uh, uh, like that big fat elephant thinking that the place where you're making margin will continue to stay in the same way, uh, that, that will be a recipe for disaster. So you have to continuously innovate. You have to assume that one little guy from the side will come and take your business away. Um, and you have to constantly um, learn, uh, evolve. Uh, and I think that that is truly, uh, I think uh, what I try to do in, in, in my own business, you know, you don't take things for granted. You know, you have to uh, constantly be value creating for who you are, whoever you are serving, uh, irrespective of, who your customer is, you, you, uh, what you gave today is table stakes tomorrow. So you got to keep inventing, keep innovating and keep delivering that extra value that differentiates you from your competition. So, so I think from that context, I think your, your uh, statement is very right. Uh, if you're leading a business, you're a CEO, you got to be a chief learning officer and learning not only um, your business, your competition, but also the market transitions uh, and also the business models, you know, uh, uh, what what worked in last decade is definitely not gonna work in the next decade. So uh, yeah, I totally it's agree with that. Last last year, January, January 2020 is not working in April 21. No, I'm coming to this COVID. Now COVID has taught us so many things, so many things. We are getting into this, we thought, BC, DC and AC, before COVID and during COVID and after <laughs> COVID, we are still into uh, DC. We were thinking that we are going to be out to AC, but I don't know when. Now, as far as your company goes, Cisco, how did you manage agility in business and compassion with people as a business leader? How did you do it? Because I uh, people talk to me about COVID ability. I have created a new competency called COVID ability. Someone called me in the month of June, 2020. Sir, we want your lecture on COVID ability. You keep on talking about competency. And I created a COVID ability competency. I will send you on your email. Maybe you will love to share your thoughts. So as a business, leader, how did you manage agility in order to keep business going, growing and compassion? Quick one, because we need to get into questions from people now. You know, um, 
I think uh, I must say Cisco did an incredible job. You know, uh, uh, we were digital already. I mean, as you know, collaboration is our business. So our offices were filled with uh, video conferencing facilities. I mean, even before COVID, we used to have, I used to have a, it's a small terminal which you can carry in your, like a book, you know, you just give it an internet connection and you are on a video conference, a press a button. So I think we were blessed the, as a company, you know, within our own environment, we had digitized uh, that, but we were still not using it to a half list. I mean, of course, uh, for us, Overnight, we get, we went online, um, and the second part, which is really uh, what our group CEO took a stand, he said when the COVID hit, you know, I think somewhere around March, April, he made a strategic call that for next one year we will not do any layoffs. Uh, we will watch the situation, and uh, uh, and I think we used, in fact, we invested in in things like. Uh, uh, you know, well-being. Uh, we 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 closely associated with many many external specialists. You know, who are uh, doing multiple interventions with our employees because we we have seen over the last one year mental health has become a big challenge. Uh, and uh, I mean, we did a research in US where we found uh, one out of four people is dealing with some sort of mental issue. So. And I think that became a priority for us. Uh, so we spent considerable amount of time, you know, working with our employees, making sure they're feeling good, they're happy. Uh, I think we we have introduced uh, HR tools, uh, you know, where you're forced as a leader to go check the well-being of your employees. So, so I think coincidentally, in the last two years, I mean. Um, uh, it's our third year. Yesterday, we got announced as uh, uh, best employer on earth uh, three times in a row. And and I think, to be honest, uh, some of this that I'm talking about played a significant role because uh, our employees felt they were taken care of. And I think it, in many ways, our productivity went up. It didn't went down. Uh, as I said, we were, we were blessed. We didn't have any hiccups because we already had the tools. It was just switching them on and getting the behavior right. Uh, but what was commendable, I think we didn't keep kept that with us. We extended that to our partners, to our customers. You know, my customers include telcos around APJC, our region, right? Uh, I think they have done an incredible job keeping us live, you know, making sure these conferences are effective. They're and uh, I think we worked with uh, all my customers to make sure we are bringing this goodness to them. I think we did a free collaboration for, for many months and now we're charging again. But I think that was to get everyone hooked on to, to you know, this new, the new platform so they can, uh, you know, as I said, applications have become the business so we can create that enablement for them. So, so I think it was two, three prone, but, uh, um, I must say, Cisco, I'm an employee of the company, managed it really, really well. Very great. Uh, great uh, applause to Cisco management and the leaders like Sanjay. I have, I'm combining two questions. One is, what are your key messages to those business leaders who are suffering right now? And second is when I saw your profile, I say you have created one MK of Angel Home and Academy, an NGO. What's your thought about that? So first one is a couple of messages to the business leaders who are suffering because of COVID last 30, 40 months. Maybe quick, three, two messages to them, how do they overcome the present pandemic? And you are why and how you created this MK of Angel Home Academy, which is an NGO. What is your mission on that? It's a great venture. Yeah. yeah, look, I, I, I said initially that, you know, when I was uh, growing up and studying, you know, I got supported by an organization in US, you know, which was down, uh, which still exists. Uh, so it was a way for me to give back, you know. Uh, I spent most of my career outside India. You know, when I came in uh, 2012, um, 
with Ericsson to India and then continued for a couple of years with Cisco before I moved to Singapore. Uh, uh, you know, I, I wanted to do something, you know, give back in some sort of way and met a lot of organizations. Um, and, and I realized, I think there are a few genuine ones, but there's a lot of uh, organizations there which are becoming more than a charity, it is a business, right? So, so, so this angel home that I've created is, is a very small effort, you know, it, I bought a land uh, very close to Gurgaon, uh, 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 a farmhouse where I build a home, which is a four and a half stories building, uh, uh, where I'll, I'll have 50 children and they will come at the age of four, between four to five. And it's a joint venture with Deputy Commissioner of Gurgaon and he eventually became a good friend uh, and helped me because I had no clue how to start a NGO in India. So, so this, this is combination of a Swedish take care system and our Gurukul system. So we call it MKF Learning Lab. Uh, so the, the curriculum, these kids will come in from orphanages uh, and uh, they will be put through this curriculum for two years. So that's the academy piece. Uh, and uh, the education is in three dimensions. I call it left brain learning and the right brain learning. Uh, and then Gurukul is about value system and where you know you teach them crafts, music, and so on. So, so we believe in those two years we have taken all the images. You know, you have to understand where these kids and they're all girls, by the way. These girl children when they end up in an orphanage, where they come from, they have really rough, bad images on the head. We will clean that in first two years. And then we've decided to send these girls to the top schools in Gurgaon, top 10 schools in Gurgaon. And, uh, and, and I have taken responsibility until they're 18. And after 18 years, you probably noticed I'm on the board of directors of Asian University for Women. Uh, Dr. Kamal is an incredible uh, gentleman, a Bangladeshi uh, origin, lives in Boston. Uh, he started a university which is grooming girls beyond uh, 10th grade. And he's educating them in top tier schools in the world. Uh, so, so that will be a natural extension for my girls to move into that setup. So uh, very small effort, but but uh, really my new purpose in life, you know, to groom these girls to become something in their life. This is something very close to my heart. And as you know, Sanjay, I am running a movement called Hashtag Women Power, a global movement. More than now, 12 months, my first Women Power on board is Dr. Karen Bedi. She is my mentor. We do a lot of leadership programs together. And this is, we are going to be one million women on this platform by 2024. That's what people say, it's a my, mad idea. I said, yes. I was interviewed by someone in the month of May 2020. Are you mad? I said, yes, I am mad. And you won't believe, we are already reaching to almost one million, uh, uh, you know, half a million women uh, around the world, 20 chapters in the world today. And I'm running this moment, which is this. This is where my question was, that one million women by 2024, you are on the board of AUW. That's what my question was. How will you, I mean, I can support you in so far as this movement is concerned in Gurgaon. How can you support this movement of hashtag human power, a global movement around the world? You know, Milani in Spain is right from watching you. She's a chapter head of Spain, a very dynamic lady. There are, uh, Jennifer is chapter head of uh, Malaysia. How will you uh, support and add value to this movement? Uh, you know me, uh, I mean, in my personal capacity, as well as Asian University for Women, that organization exists because we want to empower women, because we believe if you educate a woman, uh, you are educating a community. Uh, you must meet uh, students of this university. They have over 1,000 students now. Uh, meet the graduates of this um, this uh, university, they are changing the world. You know, uh, 
I recently met a girl who uh, who actually came from a very very humble background. I mean, they couldn't eat three meals a day. I mean, they she she could only her parents could only afford a meal a day, and she was eventually a great. She graduated from Oxford University uh, after getting trained at AUW. Uh, has come back and uh, has joined the UN organization and came back to her the place where she came from in Bangladesh. Uh, and you must look at the impact she's creating, you know. So uh, we'll love to associate with anything that's to do with woman empowerment. Uh, uh, count us in, count me in uh, uh, on, on what you guys are doing. And let's, let's connect the two organizations. I'm sure there's a lot to share. Thank you so much for your support. Hashtag Women Power, a global moment. Every Saturday evening, there's a program like 5.30. Now, all these women have taken it from me. I do only one Saturday, three Saturdays, all these women do. I have been nominated as an honorable woman in this process of doing it more than a year now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I got a question. Ash Rana from Brisbane, Australia. Question for Sanjay, or an entrepreneur. Apart from innovation, what are the top three advices, advice points? Ash is, of course, late midnight in Australia, but Ash is a darling. Yeah, tell us about it. And Ash has made great efforts at helping the foundation and the team. Ash is again a very dynamic uh, guy of the community, and he is the chapter of Global Kashmiri Party Foundation uh, of Australia. Yes, Ash, you have much the center. Apart from innovation, what are the top three advices, Sanjay? Sorry, can you rephrase the question? Top three advices for what? Entrepreneur, apart from the innovation, what are the top three advice points? For entrepreneurs? Yes. Right. Look, uh, you know, as you already said, I've been advising some startups, you know, uh, I have seen some successful and some failure, and I can tell you the difference between who succeeded and who failed. The ones that succeeded or are in a rise were the ones that that were solving some world problem. You know, uh, uh, because when you become an entrepreneur, don't have this thing in mind that I'll become the Bill Gates or I'll become uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, have on your mind that you're solving something in this world that's a problem today, right? Uh, well, if that is kind of uh, uh, the purpose of what you're trying to create, uh, uh, you're setting up yourself on a pedestal that will take you forward, right? So that's kind of one. Uh, second is uh, do not underestimate the, the complexity. Depending on what you're doing, I mean, I can talk from my industry, I mean, understand that you are probably not the only one with this idea. Look at uh, one, that you're solving a problem, who else is in the marketplace, create a clear positioning for what your business is set to do. Uh, and then the last one is uh, get the right team, uh, get the team of believers that understand your vision, that understand what you're solving for. Uh, I think these are the three important ingredients, I believe, uh, will make any entrepreneur success irrespective of uh, you know what industry uh, whether it is uh, even a uh, even a non-profit i mean these are three ingredients that are that are must have another question coming in from boston is as a successful professional and a business leader what is your recommendation for employees of the company small or large uh, I mean, if you have aspirations uh, to grow in your career, I think if, uh, and if I took the question the right way, uh, I think it's very important to understand what your purpose is, uh, what makes you happy, what are your strengths, uh, and and constantly, you know, what worries us. I mean, in the old, you're an HR leader uh, in the old world. When you had that performance review with your manager, well, he told you these were three things you didn't do well, right? Uh, I think those days are gone. I think you sh we should hone in 
strengths of the people. And, and we as individuals working in any company first must understand what our purpose is. What is it that is making us happy? And then third, what are my strengths to feed that purpose, right? So, so when these three questions are clear, uh, obviously you can, you can go uh, set your pathway to success, you know? Uh, and these are pretty difficult questions to answer. And uh, my recommendation is, irrespective of what you are in your career, uh, find three people. They could be uh, he or she, the first one, uh, what I call a coach, someone who can guide you on what you are, can do better, someone who can help you discover your potential. Uh, the second person or he or she is, is a mentor. And mentor, um, mentor is like a guru, you know, in our old, in our Hindu mythology, they, people send you to the guru pool because to that mentor, you submit yourself, meaning you are 100% transparent. Uh, when you are submitting yourself to a guru, Good. guru gets the vision to tell you what your unknown potential is. And he puts you on a path of discovering that potential. So that's Good. number two. And number three is a sponsor. And that sponsor yeah. is relevant in corporates. Uh, and my recommendation is find someone who's high up because sponsor's role is to believe in your purpose, your vision, where you are headed and go help you like a raving fan. Make sure he picks up your flag and you know takes it to the places you want to go to, right? So, so find those three people in your life. Uh, they don't have to be your managers or part of your company. Any, they can be anywhere. Uh, your dad could be your uh, your coach or mentor, but find those three people in your life because uh, they will create a, a campus. They will create a structure for you to go meet that vision and, and uh, purpose you have set for yourself. Great. I think very great response. Now I got a question from James. James is again an HR leader like me. And he says, like DK is saying, going back to the dining uh, and not having these pizzas, too much of pizzas. What is your view, Sanjay? Is there going to be good number of face-to-face -face interactions so far as learning and development is concerned? Or you think it's going to be only digital? Because he's saying, like DJ, I also do not appreciate much on this digital side because he can't give your best to the your mentees. What is your thought on this when you yeah. No, no, I think honestly, uh, I mean, there's a lot of research. I'm not telling you my own uh, thoughts here. We believe we are moving into a world of hybrid. Uh, I mean, digital only will make us sick, honestly. I mean, now comes to part of my vulnerability, you know, uh, staying on the chair whole day, moving from one meeting to other. That's not how our compass was built as humans, you know. Uh, we need to go out, we need to connect, we need to collaborate, we need to touch people, you know. Uh, so, so I believe uh, as we come out of this COVID, uh, it will be a hybrid world. Uh, I would, in my own world, I would uh, take my teams out, I will engage with them, I will, but at the same time, probably I will not make this 20 hour flight for a 30 minute meeting. I will try to do that digitally. Uh, so our sense is uh, depending on the type of business, we believe it's gonna be 60, 40, uh, uh, 40 to 50 percent digital and balance back to, you know, interactions, you know, um, because I think that is important uh, for creating a balance in our human structure. Otherwise, uh, you know, we will all turn into robots. <laughs> so. <Yeah>, absolutely. <laughs> well, I think that's a great response. And ladies and gentlemen, now you see the discussion is getting so strong. We are already moved on. I need to really stop other platforms. So I got another question there and then I go to the Zoom. So from Zoom, I can see Mr. Butt, great Sanjay, CL Butt. Uh, I think CL Butt from uh, uh, 
uh, Bangalore. So who is raising a question here? So from the Zoom, let me immediately have questions and then I go forward. Yes. Uh, yes, Jennifer, so you want to talk? Quick, Jennifer, ask a question quick. I need to close next few minutes. Another five, seven minutes, three questions more and I need to close. Yes, Jennifer, from Sarawak, Malaysia. Okay, good evening, Mr. Bakshi and Mr. Sanjay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. the patients now. Uh, I have no questions right now, but I'm very happy with the, uh, all the information shared by Mr. Sanjay Gao. Yeah, um, of course, the most important thing now, uh, through the patient, I got the idea that where you can work with the university, especially uh, at my part here, we have to work with the all the uh, uh, organ organizations for women's empowerment. We train them uh, for certain pro uh, programs for for their developments and uh, uh, self uh, improvement, especially for those uh, young entrepreneurs. I think I should go for the uh, university and approach for the young. Uh, students, especially uh, female students, for those who are interested to develop and upgrade their skills and their knowledge. And then, of course, we have to go out there to do some networking, uh, knowledge sharing, and all those things. I think that is very important for uh, now. Yeah. Thank you, Jennifer, for joining and keep the flag of hashtag women power high in Malaysia. Be vigilant, be safe. I got Rotarian JP Malhotra, president of DLF Association, uh, a question. Yes, Mr. Malhotra. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, good evening Mr. Sanjay. It's a really a pleasure to listen to you. See, my question is, you have said coach, mentor, and sponsor. Now, in normal parlance, sponsors means some political sponsor, or a uh, financial sponsor, no, or an academician. Well, I'd like you to elaborate. Do we go to a political sponsor? That means some safeguard, safe heaven, so that you can run your enterprise uh, in a better way? I'm not sure I understood the question, Mr. Bakshi. Can you yeah. repeat the question? Yeah. You, say you said uh, mentor and coach and third one sponsor. So sponsor is a political sponsor who who will financially guide, support you. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So it depends on your context, you know. Um, uh, depends on what you what your purpose, where you're headed. You know, if you are headed to become uh, a politician or you're headed to uh, run a large enterprise, yes, in that context, someone who can be your financial sponsor or it can be a political sponsor, but in a corporate setting, obviously sponsor is someone in the organization who's at an executive level, has an authority, can take your flag and take you to places. So okay. uh, it depends on your context. Correct. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Malhotra for joining. And I got Vivek Harkoli. Vivek is again a well-known business leader. That during that time you were moving towards those Baltic states. We are moving from Lithuania to Romania to Netherlands. <laughs> Vivek and me. Vivek was the business marketing director of Europe uh, at that time, and I was the HR leader from Bangkok. We were traveling together. Vivek, I unmute you. You can ask question to Sanjay Call. Uh, by the way, Harkoli is Har Har Call. He's 100 year old coal. So there's quick connection of coal between two of you. Yes, we <laughs> Good evening, Bakshi. Good evening, Sanjay. Yeah, good, good evening. evening. Uh, whenever I attend Bakshi's sessions, there are always a lot of learnings. And what I've learned today is dream big, humility, be inclusive, combine accountability and authority Absolutely. have faith in yourself and your people and last as you said any business that you are in continue learning whether it is technology or non-technology continue learning now i have a question 
Uh, Sanjay, if you were to relive your professional life as you are doing now, if you were to relive it, what is it one activity that you think you did not perform to your entire satisfaction? And what could you have done better to have really strategized that and make that particular activity successful? Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. And thank you. You did an amazing summary. I think I'm sure audiences will <laughs> uh, got a concise uh, summary of what we were talking about, right? So, look, um, <clears throat> You know, in career, I mean, they're not always, one has to remember that there will be ups and downs. And uh, um, you know, I was quoting initially uh, my dad as my first uh, teacher, you know, who has given me foundation of my value system and my value compass. Uh, you know, if I had to go back and start my career, probably, you know, when you saw downs in your career or there was something that was upsetting, I would have not taken it so seriously because, you know, my dad used to say after rain, there always is sunshine, you know, so, but those smaller things which were, didn't matter at all, you know, you lost sleep over them. Uh, I mean, if I had to relive my career, I probably um, will see success and failure as two parts of the same coin, you know, or two sides of the same coin. And one makes the other thing sweet. You know, if you don't have failures, success doesn't mean anything. So yeah, that, that's what I would change if I had to relive my career. So what you are basically saying is that, sure, there would always be a little bit of not very good successes, but don't lose your sleep over it. Continue improving yeah. and, and continue with your life as, as it is. Absolutely. Thank you, Sanjay. Absolutely. What is, what's gone is gone. Move forward, and always. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you, Bakshi. Thank you, Sanjay. Good evening. Great. Now, after twenty-five years from international, this thing you are back to Gurgaon, and Gurgaon has got this NGO. You should support them. I will take you with me after getting details from Sanjay, and we should certainly. Uh, support this NGO because you also spent two and a half decades in the global world. And uh, so I got another question coming in. Yes, there's a question. Usha wants to ask a question. Usha Muju Munshi, well known. Yeah, Usha Ji, please ask question. Go ahead. Usha Ji, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, Usha. Yes, please go ahead. This is the last question. I have a couple of more questions, but I need to go. Usha ji, are you there? I unmute you. You can unmute yourself. Hello? I think we lost Usha uh, there. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, I can't take more questions now because it's already too late for Sanjay and uh, uh, I can see a lot of people still welcome. Vinod, Cole, yeah, great to see you here. Yes, Sanjay is here. Uh, I can't take your question, Vinod, now, but I would now request, my, I am in India right now, Sanjay. Global Talent Thailand is managed by, uh, in Narula, uh, my Thai Sikh is born in Thailand, uh, fourth generation in Thailand. He's the director of Global Talent Thailand. He's going to give the vote of Thailand. Talent. Anmute and uh, Varsha and Amresh, uh, we would like to see Mr. Nerula in Narula, Savadikab. Can you unmute your uh, video also? We can unmute yourself and video as well. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, uh, so, how are you, sir? Dr. Bakshi. Good, good. Yes, uh, happy Vasaki. In Thai, it happy is Baisa. Songkran. Happy Songkran. Enjoy the happy. day. Happy New Year, Happy New Year, everything. Yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> well, let me uh, try to give a brief of what happened uh, this evening. Uh, and this especially is uh, for Mr. Sanjay Kaur. And uh, it is an honor to have listened to the discourse with such a distinguished personality. For me, 
I think he is a model that we all can follow and become successful like him. And that's very important for us to note down. And it all began as Sanjay was growing up. His dad inculcated the values of humility, aim high, dream big, but start a step at a time. And that is exactly what he did. While his mother taught him to be confident, she believed in him. And that is a brilliant start for him because he's got that confidence backed by the mother who loved him dearly. As he was growing up, his friends, his teachers, professors also influenced him, guided, inspired, and supported him to no end. At Ericsson, he got a break, given the opportunities to grow and experiment and try out his new ideas. Ericsson, being a Swedish company, and they believed in equality and fairness. And Sanjay Gaur also believed in the same values. He took the opportunity of engaging and involving his people in Africa. And that is a brilliant start. Ladies and gentlemen, I tell you, when you involve your people, when you involve the local, you only can win. There is no other way. Mr. Ja uh, Mr. Sanjay believed in diversity and also believed in grooming and promoting the next generation leader. And that is precisely what he has done. For me, he is what we call a contagious leader. A contagious leader is a leader who creates everyone to become a leader. You are the leader in your area of responsibility because you are accountable, because you are assertive and because you have got the right attitude and that will bring you to work as a team. It will bring trust, transparency and togetherness and nothing can be greater than this. Lastly, results speak louder than words. Absolutely. And he believed in Pareto law of 80 and 20. In Sweden, in Sweden, he got the opportunity to turn around a losing business and make it into black, make it into a making profit unit. Bravo, sir, hats off to you. May I take this opportunity to thank you to no end. Let me sum it up one more time, ladies and gentlemen. Be humble, be on the going, be confident, and you will and you will be successful. Mr. Sanjay Kosa, may I thank you to no end. I thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you once again. And I look forward to meeting you in person. Your philanthropic endeavor at Gurgaon, grooming children, especially ladies, from, from the younger age up to 18, and then passing on to the other guy who is in Boston. I think, sir, you are a great man. May God bless you forever and always till the end of time, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Achan is, is like a professor in Thailand. He's also a leadership coach like me. We do programs, one dream, one team, roadmap to success, DNA of leadership around the world. Sanjay, it has been an amazing experience to be with you this evening. Personally, I also picked up a lot of things, and we would certainly invite you to Bangkok also to address our India Thai Chamber of Commerce, Indian Association of Thailand, and we would certainly be in touch with you and uh, take it. Ladies and gentlemen, whosoever has been watching it around the world, and who is going to be watching it later, uh, beyond this day, because the YouTube will be available in the next half an hour on the social media, pick up those wonderful opportunities what Sanjay shared about his journey of excellence and even if we are able to pick up and make ourselves better passionate mad leaders to create value for businesses for the community for the country and for the global world one world one love one human being one human race we all need to be together like one dream one team 
Thank you very much, Sanjay, for being with us. And thanks everyone from different parts of the world to be with us. We have next Wednesday, another great leader coming in. Wish you all the best, Sanjay, in your endeavors. God bless you. And you are a perfect example of taking leadership excellence forward along with humility, as well as turning to the next level of excellence. I will be in touch with you, especially for this women power concept, which Achan in and myself, we are building it around the world. And Dr. Bakshi, so sir, yeah. Dr. Bakshi, if I may, uh, Mr. Sanjay, uh, under the leadership of Dr. Bakshi, we had uh, done many workshops for Ericsson in, uh, in Shanghai. At that time, yeah. we were talking about diversity and uh, we concentrate on the skills of working together and cross-cultural communication and management. That's fantastic. No, thank you so very much. I am honored and I'm blessed to have met you all. So looking forward to some association in the future. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So, Take thanks. care and have a great evening, sir. Bye-bye. Good -bye. day in the USA and Canada. Good afternoon, late good afternoon, England. And good evening in Asia Pacific. Rather, good night already. Ash Rana must be sleeping. And go to the bed now. And even Singapore is going to be late night for you. Wish you all the best, Sanjay. We'll catch up with you. Wish you all the best. Good luck, everybody. Bye-bye.